Hello and welcome to stream. Oh, I cannot connect chat. Please try again later. No chat. Why can't we connect the chat, y'all? Ooh. Maybe I can try popping out. How's everybody doing this week? We're doing good, having a good time. Ooh, I think I got chat. Somebody write something in chat. Somebody write something in chat. Or not, you know, it's all good. Um, how's everybody doing? Having a good week? Everybody having fun? All uh, one of you that's in the stream right now? Good times? Good times? All right, let's do this. <laughs> Sorry, random. Uh, hello, is chat working? Anybody? Anybody chat working? Everybody? Cool. Uh, welcome to the stream. We're going to have some fun tonight. I'm super excited. We're going to try moving the stream outside today. We're at the grill. Uh, I got a bunch of fun food ready. Nobody's in the stream anymore. Fuck myself. Cool. Good times. Um, let's see how this goes. I'm just going to talk to myself. Um, yeah. Hopefully it's going to be great. We're going to have a good time. I'm going to make some awesome food. I'm going to eat all the awesome food. And then I'm going to sit back and do nothing. What up, Olenix? How y'all doing? Having a good, having a good uh, Saturday, are you? Hope you are. I'm having. It's been a pretty good day on my end. Been doing a. Got some uh, meat packaging this morning for the two fat Justins. We did some. Um, package like 200, 160-ish uh, packages of meat. Just stupid crazy uh, for going for the next week's market. So be on the lookout for that. And ran some errands, got outside for a little while, pick up some stuff, hit up some stores for today. So give me a good day, a uh, good night. And yeah, I think everything else is going really well. Um, excited to eat great Korean food for, you know, nice. Sounds awesome, dude. That sounds like a good Saturday right there. Um, hope you all are having some, some beers or wine or sake juice box. I'm drinking sake out of a juice box, and I love it. It's awesome. It's actually pretty solid, uh, fairly dry. Um, touch of sweetness. Oh, he has a company name. Is he going to start selling? Like, let's, uh, let's talk about this offline sometime, Mark. I'd like to know... Uh, Hot bucket. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. That's great. Um, a lot of, I mean, a lot of good peppers coming out too. Uh, I don't know what kind of peppers he's growing for the salsa, but that's great. Um, super exciting, dude. Really cool. Um, I can't wait to try it. Uh, I hope I get to be on the taste panel for uh, pre-production. Saying, Mark, uh, Nick, come on. So let's make this happen. Uh, so yeah, so. We're going to wait a few more minutes, get to let people kind of get going on stuff, maybe get in the stream, and then we're going to get bounced in and start cooking some food. Um, as you saw, hopefully on my socials, I got the pork. I cooked some pork shoulder today at Friendly Next Butcher. Um, shout out to them. They've got great stuff. I'm really excited to utilize some product. I got some andouille sausage for this week for some dinners. I got a chicken. We're doing fried chicken tomorrow at home. Um, so a lot of cool stuff, but I picked up some pork shoulder. I got it cut as thin as I could with my knife, and I got it marinated in my um, my sauce, my bulgogi sauce. Uh, I've been riffing on this sauce, variations of it for a couple years now. Um, I like where it's at right now. I think it's in a good space, but I'm always going to continue to vary it based on what I have around uh, and how I'm kind of feeling. Uh, today, we added a little red miso to it because I wanted to have a little miso, and I added some... Uh, some Fuji apple for the sweetness with a touch of honey because I like uh, like what honey brings to that as well. Um, I like that savory sweet that honey has. So it's be good times. Um, so yeah, anybody doing anything fun for this week? Anybody enjoy the lightning storms we've had and all the rain? It's been really pretty nice as far as the rain. What's up, Jeff? How you doing, man? Are you here all all night or are you uh, you babysitting? Nephews today, nephews and nieces today. Got any good beer to drink? Are you drinking a good beer? Hope you're drinking a good beer. What am I talking about? You're in Portland. Of course you're drinking a fucking good beer. Come on. Um, yeah. 
I'm repping, I don't know, you probably can't see, but I'm repping my Folks Farm or my uh, Native Hill Farm t shirt I got in the mail. Um, came yesterday as part of a fundraiser they were doing uh, to support, uh, I can't remember already, but proceeds go to supporting local um, agriculture and other things. And uh, Native Hill, I'm super excited to have them back this year. Uh, great people up there. Their, pro their produce is awesome. Um, and a lot of stuff will be, that I have tonight. We picked up from Folks Farm from their delivery this week. Um, Alex and the team uh, do like they're just they're like killing it. I love the produce. I love what their attitude, their their seed saving, and just how they're kind of going about developing that uh, those varietals that are hard enough they can tolerate our elevation or our climate. And I think it's super cool. All their seeds are tested. They grow, they, they, just, they survive and they sustain here very well. Um, and it's just like, like, it's a good philosophy. It's not just like buying seed and putting the ground and selling it. It's like this whole holistic approach to uh, full circling on the produce. Um, if you're in Fort Collins, definitely uh, recommend checking them out. They'll be at the Old Town Farmer's Market. Uh, it starts up a week from today. Um, and they all, they have a lot of really great stuff. Um, I've been using them since last year. They started last year and like, but they really like to push some diversity. I'm excited to see what Native Hill brings to the party this year. Uh, they took last year off. Uh, so really kind of should be fun to see kind of the stuff they've got going on. They have a brand new uh, farm stand. So you can go there and pick up produce um, and shop there, which is going to be great. And then, um, ooh, nice. And then Raisin Roots is up on West Vine, kind of over by Irish Elementary, if you guys know where that's at. Um, they have also have a little farm stand. It is self-serve, um, really cool stuff. Ben does really, is really dope. Um, really cool little community he has there. Um, I had, had the pleasure of having a tour there by Ben and just seeing how their approach and just their thought process behind it. Um, very, very uh, well-minded about the, the environment and its community and just the, the that urban farm life. Um, Definitely worth checking out. Check out their websites. Uh, check out their produce. Hit them up with the markets. They're always busy, um, and we're just getting into it this year. Like it's just starting, and I'm so excited to talk. Uh, to feature it will be every stream. I'm going to be talking about and using as much local as I can for the the vegetable product. And um, if you're ordering paellas for me, I'm going to continue to rotate in that local produce as that chef's choice option. Or if I can get something, I know I'm going to get consistently. We'll be adding that just as a button on the thing. Um, so. Keep an eye out um, that I like repping that local. I think it's super cool. Um, that's how we continue to survive in a food climate that we're in right now. So without much other further ado, because you know, we're eight minutes in, so people are either going to show up or they're not going to show up. Let's get going on this stuff, right? Everybody excited? I'm pretty excited. All right. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about green food. Um, green food, I, I think I always think about green food It is like really like how we eat a little bit, like lots of protein, um, lots of like, I don't know, they eat fun. Like they like adding pieces and there's always different elements and it's really creative. Um, I love it. I think it's super fun. It's uh, sometimes it can get a little heavy and a little rich because of uh, A, this is the protein focus, but also just lots of pork fat, um, lots of just fat in general. I, I don't know. Like I, I definitely leave very full when I eat Korean barbecue out. Um, so we're going to kind of uh, approach it a little bit differently, but we're still going to hit up on the best part of a Korean barbecue meal, the banchan. Um, banchan are like, when you if you haven't had Korean barbecue, I oh, got to go. Just do it. It's such a worth, worth the experience. Get one, Once the restaurant's open, back up again. Go sit at a, a cook table. Get the big thing. Go with a group of people. Drink a ton of height. Uh, our height super premium, man, like 4% rice beer. So good. Um, and just eat everything, get some, some spicy kimchi soup and get a mung bean pancake with scallions and, and then get grill all your meats, get, uh, pork belly, get bulgogi, get pork bulgogi, get, short rib, kalbi, all of these things are amazing. They're all, they, it's just so much fun. But the banchan are these little dishes that come to the table when you sit, like once you order, they just bring a variety. And it's never the same thing. Like every, you can go to the same spot every every week and it's always gonna rotate based on what they have. 
um, and what they're feeling like. So like, it's always, it's always changing. It's always fun. There's a lot of variety. Like I, I love it. And trying to guess and like try new things and just like, Ooh, what's that? Ooh, what's that? Um, is just super fun. And also like seeing some of the, like, the GI influence that, is has happened to the Korean food system, like the cold mashed potatoes or uh, the egg salad, or like some of those like kind of out there that are definitely like stuff they picked up from GIs, but then they made it their own. Like you get this cold potato mashed potato with like peas in it. That's just like crazy, but it, it's a bunch of um, some things you're always going to see. You're always going to see kimchi. Like kimchi will always be on the table as a bunch. And if it's not, you shouldn't be eating Korean food there because you need to have kimchi. Like kimchi is this, the, I've talked about kimchi in this stream many times. I will probably talk about it more times. I implore everyone to try making kimchi. Wild fermentation is awesome. Uh, funk is awesome. Um, I am blessed to have a little mason jar of some kimchi that Mark Olenek here made. I'm very excited to feature this and eat this tonight. Actually, it's gonna be great. Um, so it's gonna be like, Kimchi needs to be on the table all the time. And then from there, it's like, what can we do? So like what I'm going to do tonight and what we're the fee, like the focus of most of the stream is going to be is playing and making your own bancha. Um, and these are great because they, you can have them not just when you're doing cream, but like they're great to have in the fridge as snacks, good way to eat your vegetables and try different things. I won't be doing any fish cake today or any of the gels because I don't want to work that hard, but also like I it just it's too I think it's a little too labor intensive, and I wasn't able to go to a good gro uh, Asian grocery store to pick up like fish cake right now. Um, but featuring a lot of really cool local produce, um, the stuff, a lot of those pantry items that are listed somewhere on in the the Facebook group uh, that I've picked up and I just have all the time because these are things that I always use. Um, so without further ado, we're going to get into it. I've started a few just because I take a little bit more process. Um, and I just didn't want to have to um, take up a lot of time like washing produce and grilling some stuff. And like, we're going to talk about a couple of the bunch of, we're going to talk about a couple of the other things. And we're going to, we're going to try to take the laptop outside and we're going to grill some meat. Uh, I got some sticky rice going in the rice cooker next to me. Uh, and then we'll kind of talk about from there, everything else that I'm doing. Feel free to ask any questions in chat. Uh, I love to know kind of where, if you have any thoughts, ideas, recommendations, like I'm always looking to adapt and change what we're doing and how I'm doing the food, this food, especially because like, this is a hobby. This isn't something I have any professional training in at all. Um, this is something I've read books, I've watched TV shows and I've just eaten as much as I can. And I just really like it. Um, fun show, it was on Create, well, I don't know, eight or nine years ago, uh, Kimchi Chronicles. Uh, it's John George, Ronnie Kirkin's wife. She is, um, She's Korean GI. You gotta watch stuff. You'll get it. Um, they have a cookbook for like a companion cookbook and DVD. Uh, really cool stuff. They like Americanize the the Korean food, but then she goes to Korea with friends and they eat street food. It's it's a lot of fun. It's kind of campy at times. I don't know. I haven't watched it in a long time, so I don't know if it holds up. Um, but it was fun at the time. Um, like yeah, if you can find it somewhere, I recommend it. It's a it's a good watch for sure. So let's head down. I drink some more sake out of a juice box. I think there's a hole in my straw and I'm pretty bummed about this. And we're going to go. So let's go down. Can we see everything? We're good. All right. So right here, this is some awesome baby bok choy that I got in my little um, folks farm delivery this week. So it was a, it's a spicy Asian mix, but this is almost all baby bok choy. Bok choy is a, um, I, I, I love the flavor. It's got this really cool, um, like, not quite like a cabbage-y flavor, but it has a little bit of a cabbage thing going on for it. Um, so what I did is I, I washed it really, really well because local produce, like, they may do a light wash on it, but you should always wash because you're just dirt, bugs, mainly bugs. Bugs are definitely like the hide, especially in box stores, it gets bigger. The little... The, the root structure they like to hide in there. So do a really good wash on that. So I washed it and I just hit it with a little bit of canola oil and I threw it on a super hot, hot grill just so I got some nice char. And then I added some rice vinegar, a little bit of soy sauce 
and a little bit of fresh grated ginger. So I took my microplane and it's grated, or not ginger, but garlic. And a little bit of rice vinegar and a little bit of the goji jar, the Korean red chili flake. Um, and that's all I did. And it's gonna, it's, it's a perfect, like fun, little spice, little garlic, and then you get this really cool flavor throughout. That's one. I have these awesome little, um, little sprouts we also got from Folks Farm this week. They're, uh, they're radish sprouts, they're super spicy. I just did like, I, I garn like a, a bunch of you get cream fairly often is a little um, like bean sprouts, like mung bean sprouts that they will toss in like sesame oil. Um, sometimes they'll blanch them so like they're a little soft and a little crunchy. And then it's just like sesame oil, maybe a little bit of soy to add a little bit of salt, and that's it. So I kind of treat them the same way. I did a little bit of salt, a little bit of soy, um, set, and then some toasted sesame oil, and then a little bit of fresh grated ginger in it. So that you get that kind of that fresh ginger spice. And that's going to be like, it's got a nice spiciness from the from the sprouts. And then these like really fun, like toasted sesame. It's like, oh, I, I always find toasted sesame like incredibly soothing and comforting. I think it's like... I just love the smell and this makes me feel like relaxed. Um, and then I have like a riff kind of on almost like a cucumber kimchi kind of, you'll see this fairly often, like marinated cucumbers and like goju jang, goju jang, a little bit of goju jara, maybe a little soy, a little fish sauce. Um, I took some Thai basil, goju jang and some ginger garlic and a little bit of soy blended it up and i just and a little bit of pureed cucumber and i just added that to i'm just gonna let that sit and marinate so you have this like fresh like fresh crunch but then you get a little bit of spice and a little bit of like umami savoriness like just something to continue balancing the dish from there um we have the kimchi and then from here i have two other two other things i'm gonna kind of work on right now i have some nice white ice school radishes um, I'm going to shave these with my with my mandolin down real thin and the thin little strips. So we're going to hit it up with some little ginger, a little garlic, a little rice, a little fish sauce. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of cilantro in this one. Um, just so that's like continuing to have just different, everything should have a different taste, a different flavor, a different component so that you're not eating like, Oh, this is, this, this is, this is a different vegetable that just tastes the same. Cause that's the same marinade. Like that's just lazy. Um, so we'll have that. And then I have the last of the little bits of purple asparagus from the Bourdain stream. I'm going to also shave down some Thai basil, a little red miso, um, a little soy, a little sesame, and we'll have like a little miso y asparagus as well. Should be good times. Everybody doing good? Everybody uh, keeping up, having fun? Good. So I'm gonna get my mandolin to a point where I want it, and uh, I'm gonna proceed to not cut my hand. I want it a little bit thinner than that because that's gonna be a little, a little much to bite down. I think, right? Yes, it is. So, yeah, this is what the last week of the school year, right? Everybody. Uh, well, at least in Colorado and Fort Collins, this is the this is the last week. Um, Ethan gets to go to school on Thursday next week and turn in his laptop, clean out his lockers, um, drop out, all that stuff. So, anticipating a bit of a bummer day next week for that, um, just because like it's just gonna be hard. It's kind of like the end of the year, but we didn't really get to finish the year. Um, so, I'm definitely not looking forward to that at all. And then. Trying to make a decision on what the next steps for summer camp are going to be. Um, Ethan is going to a summer camp for what this would be his sixth year, right? Sixth year, I think. Um, that like he's like we really like a lot of a lot of the stuff. Like it's not perfect because it's a summer camp and no summer camp is perfect. But like we're kind of nervous just on like how do they do summer camp right now? How do we how do we ensure safety and protections and just like peace of mind um we've been trying to talk about how what we're going to do and how we're going to do it we're including ethan in the conversations and how, making sure that he has an active voice and an opportunity to you know have his decision and opinion known because we want to make sure that like he buys in i'm not going to force him to do anything so we're just trying to figure that one out and then 
trying to figure out some summer plans. Anybody going to try and do anything? I know that Olenek's got a summer trip. Hopefully they can still do. I'm not sure Wyoming is still pretty uh, closed to non-Wyoming residents. It's part of the, the uh, Happy Hour stream last night. We're talking with Fred Hirsch, who is, uh, he lives in Cheyenne. And just, yeah, like you can't camp right now. You can't, you can barely even go do anything in Wyoming if you're not a Wyoming resident, which is just nuts. But I know SS is the same way. Like SS, you can't even be like a non, like a Colorado resident, but a non SS resident to go up there. We were talking about maybe going to SS this weekend and like, and stay in a family rental, like a cabin, but the, it's a hundred percent vacation rental community. And so if we run up there, there's an opportunity or potential that it could just be, like bring down some bad press on stuff. And we don't want to like, we don't want to fuck with that. Like that's not fair to the generosity of people. And I just, I don't want to deal with that. It's not cool. It's just, it's a pretty shit time right now. Um, we are looking at maybe making a road trip at some point somewhere. I don't know. We just got to get the heck out of here. Look, same look, kind of tired looking at the same eight walls of our house and the same road trip around town we take every week where we go to the grocery store and we run some errands and we come back home. So hopefully some stuff and some fun stuff comes out of it. What was I? I was going to do cilantro, right? Chat. A little cilantro in here. Um, cilantro strip stem is also really amazing. So please try to use all of the cilantro plant. I know I've talked about it, but I'm not kidding. You should use all of the cilantro, cilantro plant. It's awesome. Um, so hit up a little bit of cilantro. Don't necessarily need to do like a super fine. I just want to get it so that it's not like, here's a big piece of garden that I get to floss out of my teeth later tonight because I think I'm going to get enough of that out of the pork, right? So let's try to make it a little more manageable on the garnish side. Because... Wanna, and it's just like cilantro is always just not fun or easy for me to chop up without making apparently a mess. So good job by me, right, y'all? Yeah. Um, is chat still working? Maybe, hopefully. Um, there we go. Rice is done, y'all. Keep warm. Hopefully it doesn't burn the bottom of my rice. Uh, cilantro, a little bit of the ginger. Gotta see how it goes, right? So yeah, so you know, it's been been good. Uh, work is still work. The work's still open. I get to have my temperature checked at least three times a day. So, uh, tons of fun. What I've taken away from the temperature checks at work is not any single attendant has done the temperature check the exact same way. I've had people like put the the infrared sensor like right on my forehead. I've had some be like three feet away. Some like I, it's there's no continuity or a, like consistent system for it, and I just think that's really interesting. No, um, because I would hope by now like there would be like a this is exactly the distance and how you should do it. And it's just it's been pretty crazy. Um, but I, I, I've actually seen a bit of an increase in business in the cafe um, this last week. Um, we had actually, I had some box lunch caterings, which shit, I haven't had any catering since we started there, um, which is kind of interesting. And just like a lot more people are coming in ordering food. I'm seeing some new faces. I'm seeing some people who haven't eaten with me who continue to brown bag their frozen, like it's not even like they're like bringing in like leftovers. It's like, it's a cup of soup or it's, which whatever you gotta do, you gotta do, because it's payroll deduct, so it's not like it's it's cheap, but come on. Like I make every day I make like pretty much two order bacon egg, ham egg, sausage egg, like biscuit and English muffin sandwiches. And a guy comes in and buys one of the Jimmy Dean frozen pre maids for twenty cents less. With a ton of chemicals, ever, and I, I'm like, I don't understand, dude. Why is this a thing? Um, I don't know. I'm just venting. Uh, 
family's a little tired of listening to me vent about the same crap every day. So y'all get to listen to me vent a little bit, I guess, unfortunately. Gotta get my spoons. Um, and a little rice vinegar. I should move this over. I don't want to go over here. So a little rice vinegar for some acid. Again, I'm not seasoned. I'm gonna hit this with like just a little bit of the fish sauce. If I had some uh, fermented salted shrimp, I bet that'd be pretty good right now, right? And a touch of the soy. I know I could probably ask really nicely of Mark all and I for a little bit of uh, salted fermented shrimp, but I don't want it that bad because I know that my fridge will just smell like that for the rest of eternity. And that sounds pretty terrible for me. Um, yeah, garlic, ginger, soy, fish, cilantro. Bowl might be a little too small. We'll see. It's fine. Almond brown, like, I know I've, I've probably referenced him a ton on the show, but like something I always took away when I was a lot younger watching the show, like was that like your hand is also a tool. Always use your hands. Uh, it's the best tool because you can get everything super, like everything can get clean with your hand. It's a better spatula. It's better tongs. Just make sure your hands are clean, that you wash them really well. Um, I know that's a kind of a mantra that everyone gets right now on the, I'm going to do a bit of the gochi jar. Why the hell not? I don't want to do too much of the sesame oil because I don't, I think it's me kind of overkill what I'm trying to achieve here. And I just don't want, again, that same flavors over and over again. So we got, see what it tastes like. Mm hmm. Oh, that tastes really good. I like the, the crunch from the radish and you get like, a little bit of the funk in the soy, you get that ginger and garlic in the cilantro is this nice, like bright green, fresh element that kind of finishes it off. Mm. Yeah, that's super tasty. Um, hmm, I think I need one. I'm gonna hit it with just a touch of the honey because I think just a little bit of sweetness will help kind of uh, it really ties the room together. You get a little uh, big Lebowski quote in here, right? So Oh yeah, that smells really good. I'm really, really liking liking this. And I think like something I picked up as I've been continuing to kind of just mess with my my exploration of Korean and just many Pan Asian cuisines is once I get like a taste. Hmm, yeah, I like that. Once I get a taste that I like out of it, like a flavor profile, uh, ingredient list. Or just like something that I know is mimics what I like, what the flavors I get in the restaurant are. I go kind of off book and I just continue to kind of develop my own recipes for it because I think I like the way that it, like, I can have that creative freedom with it. And as long as it still tastes somewhat similar, I've adapted uh, a concept into something that I know that I can re replicate without having to constantly re refer to a recipe because I'm cooking at home. I'm not like a restaurant. And I can continue to just explore and modify and, and toy with and tinker with so that I can like just find these new ways to do it. And I just think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, I think that's the most enjoyable aspect of home cooking um, that I hope you guys are doing as well uh, is that get creative freedom. You don't need to follow the book, follow the recipe because it's not like you're in a restaurant where you have to replicate that same dish over and over and over again, exactly the same because the diners are different. Like your diners are yourself or your family, or whoever you're cooking for. And just make them eat fun food and you get to have fun with it. Because when you're bored cooking at home, you're probably not doing it right. Drink. I'm super bummed my straw has a hole. Like I was really looking forward to drinking out of a juice box. All right. So we're going to hit this up with some asparagus. I'm not going to blanch the asparagus because I want the purple and I want that raw. But we're going to. Hopefully, see how this works. See if I can go tip down for it to go stock down. Ooh, there we go. Look at that. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see that. Yeah, we're gonna have some cool strips here, y'all. It's gonna be fun. There we go. Got some cool. Uh, this also works like with zucchini, summer squash. Um, as we get there, I'll probably be doing some of that like uh, fresh marinated like zucchini ribbon noodles that are really like. I think are kind of fun. Like we have the the spiralizer for like doing like 
those like actual noodles, but doing like this or with a peeler, you get like a different kind of texture and you just marinate them with some lemon juice and, or some, some fruity vinegars and some salt. And you just get this, like, and you change the texture, you change the flavor. Uh, and it's just a different way to eat vegetables. Like, as I think we all know, summer squash and zucchini can be incredibly boring and pedestrian because people continue to do the same stuff with it. And like, there's gotta be better ways to enjoy those vegetables instead of just like, oh, I had them in a pasta or I just kind of roast or like, there's, there's other ways to enjoy. It. And I think it's, it's on us to kind of explore and push those limits because why not? We're home, we can, right? So, it's gonna get these done. I'm gonna go kick the grill in here in a second so that it gets up roaring. I will say we're doing the charcoal grill, but then I was like, how do I like get it started and then maintain the heat level that I want for a stream at the time I'm gonna need it? Cause I need it like pretty roaring hot. Cause I want to like quick cook. Um, that's that was stupid, Justin. That's a good way to like shave most of your thumb off. I don't have much of the thumb left at this point in my life. Um, but have maintain that heat so that I can get caramelization and pork cooking in like a really tiny manner. So we're just going to, we're going to use the gas grill. I don't want to leave it running because I don't want to have to go buy more propane, you know, tomorrow. I, like, I use that grill fairly often. So because sometimes you just want a pretty light, easy grill. So I got all these nice zucchini ribbons. We're going to hit it up with this a little bit of the salt right now. I'm going to marinate. I'll just kind of toss to get the salt coating. I don't want it like fully seasoned at this point. I'm just looking to start getting some of that moisture to leach out um, and they'll help them kind of be a little more malleable. They won't be nearly as stiff as they are right now. Um, and then we'll hit it with uh, some miso and whatever else I want to put in there from here. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to kind of clean up my board a little bit. Y'all having fun? You're already good? Is chat completely broken? I, I would have to reset stream and you have to like re-log like my Friday night happy hour is now every 40 minutes. So I don't want to do that because I don't want to lose everybody. So yeah, cool. Um, all righty. Let's see. What's uh hey, how y'all doing? It's good seeing y'all. Um Yes. Sorry, I'm just seeing what else is going on. If there's any other, uh, no other chat stuff. No, it looks like chat's still pretty broken. So uh, hopefully you guys are, I don't know, can't figure it out. I wish it worked, but it doesn't work apparently. So we'll see. What is, uh, yeah. So, all right. Uh, hold tight for like two seconds. I'm going to run and kick the grill on, and then we're going to. We'll talk about what I marinated the meat in. We'll hit this asparagus up and we'll go outside and we'll grill some meat and kind of make the dish happen. So, be right back. Eyes are back. I don't ever let me do that again, guys. Come on. Hmm. It's gonna shove so the hole is like below the level of the sake. Sake number two is this. Uh, it's a Junmai. I didn't get any Korean sake uh, or soshu because I didn't see any that was good. Um, a little bit more difficult to source, uh, or I just on the right store to hit up. Um, but I don't I know. I like the little can instead of buying a big. I like I like my sake super dry. Um, I don't like the sweeters or the cloudies. I don't like cloudy. Like it just not my thing. Um, so I went with two like fun packaging. I'm sold. I'm, I'm a sucker for easy packaging. But also just like super dry, really food friendly. I think dry is a better uh, sake for food anyway. Um, when I when I do it so. Wanted to kind of have fun. I do have some fun beer in there as well. I picked up a can of uh, double dry hop very, um, very trait from Cerebral. It's in town. Pretty excited for that. It should be pretty dope. I'm going to drink that a little bit later. Uh, and then I got some funky beers and some other beers. I got some homebrew ready 
uh, been drinking. Olenek, how was – if you had it, let me know. Uh, throw me some feedback. I'd like to know what you thought of the the homebrew if you've had it yet. Um, my first homebrew in, like, over a year. So any feedback would be greatly appreciated. And, or anybody watching this in the vlog, if you had the homebrew, hit me up. I'd love, love to get some feedback on it. Um, second time I've tried this beer, the first beer, if you've had the first beer, was, like, just straight time. Like, just tasted like I was eating a time plant all the time for, like, a year. <laughs> And then it finally faded, but man, it took literally it took a year. Hmm. All right, uh, we're gonna go back down. Unfortunately, chat's not working. Feel free to text me. Most of you, I think, have my number, so shoot me a text if you have questions or input or thoughts, um, so that I can know what's going on because this piece isn't working right now. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna go back down. We're gonna get this. Here we go. Look at that. So I get this. I'm gonna hit it up again with the. Um, I'm just going to bring a little, whatever, a little bit of this rice vinegar. I think lemon would be really good in this as well. I just don't have any lemons. I thought we had some, but we used them. So it is what it is. I have a little bit of ginger. You can use the microplane to grate the ginger so I can, I don't want big chunks of ginger. I kind of want it to be fairly fine, almost pureed. that i'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of this miso for the same reason um a little bit of the soy for that salty element i know that it's some salt but i'm just looking for a little bit of salt just a little bit and i'm gonna get some tweezers out and we're just gonna kind of mix and hope for the best i know my bowl is probably too small but these, this is the last bowl that I have. It's uh, well, I'm all my bigger bowls are currently holding other things. So that's what you guys get. So well, let's go right in. We're gonna hand it. It's fine. It smells really good. This is some red miso. I think I talked about this a while ago. I love um, the, the this is a different flavor of the red miso compared to the white. Um, this has got a really cool flavor. Um, Kind of want to get like we're been kind of getting a little more Chinese food, so we're looking at like uh, black black rice vinegar, um, Chinese Chinese cooking wine, uh, fermented black beans, like some fun. Like I'm really excited for kind of where that stuff is going. We found a really cool um, well online supplier for some stuff. Trying to plan a trip down the Pacific Ocean. Ooh, that's good. Ah, uh, that's super good. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with how that came out. All right, we're gonna hit with a little bit of Thai basil uh, because I want this like an, I like adding that little fresh element, and the Thai basil has that nice, like fun, almost like a um, uh, fennelly anise flavor that I think is just like kind of plays well, and it just adds a different fresh element to all our fun garnishes. So, just gonna do a little. Call this a chiffonade. I don't know if you can see it. It's just little ribbons. Um, I need to sharpen my knife. I'm aware of that. Thank you. I can I can hear everyone in there going, Jesus, Justin, your knife is like so dull. I know. All right. I know. It's on the list. Sharpen all the house knives tomorrow. Just deal with it. I'm going to eat all this shit anyway tonight. Probably. Except for a little bit that I'm trading. I'm going to make a little meal for a friend and get a fun beer in return hopefully we'll see how that goes pretty excited about that so i got that yeah it smells really good i'm gonna kind of let that hang out and just sit and let's talk a little bit about the pork marinade so uh, definitely can marinate this longer in advance like you can marinate this in, in the morning of night before it's just going to be like more permeating the whole the whole dish, uh, the whole, all the meat, like depending on how much salt and like, if there's any like other acids you put into it, you can um, begin to start like cooking the meat and then you'll get like a weird, almost like chewy rubbery texture um, that, that happens when you over brine meat. Uh, so just gotta be careful on like where you're at with those levels. Um, for the marinade, I have two ounces of gojujaro, Tablespoon of gochujang, 
flip that. Two ounces of gojujang, tailspoon of gojujaro, about this much of a serrano chili. Um, a whole clove of garlic. I would say probably a nub of ginger, about like that. Um, one whole Fuji apple peeled, cored, and seeded. Uh, the stems of one bunch of cilantro, the juice of one lime. Um, tablespoon of sesame oil. Tablespoon of honey. And then I did a tablespoon of red miso. Um, and a little bit of rice vinegar because I need a little bit more acid and I ran out of lime. Um, and that's it. So I just hit in the blender until it's smooth puree. Uh, and then I just like, it's got a lot of heat. It's a, it's pretty spicy. Uh, but when we cook it down with the meat, the meat's going to add, like it's going to dilute that spice. And then we eat it with the rice. The rice doesn't have any salt, any spice at all. And so I've been really trying, especially with food that I serve with rice to almost over season elements of it. Cause the, you need to make up for what you lose when you put it on the rice or eat it with the rice. Cause you're just, you're diluting and I want that flavor to pop. I want it to be bright and big and bold. So that's what I've been doing. Um, not always work. Sometimes it gets a little salty. Um, is what it is. Uh, but it's just a, it's a, it's a give and take until I find the right ratios. Um, I had this sitting for what, almost an hour and a half now. Um, I had it in the fridge until like right before stream. So it's just been out for a little bit. I don't recommend letting meat sit on the counter for long periods of time unless you intend on cooking it pretty, pretty quickly during that time frame. Um, always want to make sure your meat stays in the, in the fridge or the freezer pinning because we don't want to get ourselves sick. A lot of people get food poisoning at home because of improper handling of meat cross contact, not washing your hands appropriately. Um, and unfortunately, in my experience, sometimes that gets mistaken and blamed on restaurants. It's my little soapbox, I'm gonna jump off right now, but it is what it is. I feel like a kid drinking this little box, I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda interesting. All right, we ready? We ready to go see uh, how much I can annoy my neighbors because uh, they were li they're literally right there. Um, See how it goes. So I'm gonna hope that I don't need to plug the laptop in for probably the 10 minutes we'll be outside. Uh, and y'all should just like maybe text me and tell me I'm yelling too loud if you can hear me. Um, because I'd be bummed if you could. And uh, I don't want to cause a scene more much more than I already do all the time. All right, so let's do this. I'm plugging, we're, we're streaming, I have meat. And you're just gonna watch my face go all the way there. It's gonna be good times. See, look at that. Look at my face. Ooh, we're outside. We're outside. It's good times. Look at my backyard. It's nice. And moving stuff. Grill is super toasty warm. And we're outside. How's everybody doing? You guys all good? We're good. Sweet. Looks like the neighbors have their doors shut. Nobody's outside. Hey, this is gonna be a good time. How's my lighting? It's backlit, right? You can barely see me. Cool. Also, chat, you're going to have to, like, um, wait because I have to go get a plate to transfer to when this is done. But that's fine. I will run. Oh, man, it smells really good. Just getting that stuff going. Look at it. Super awesome, right? Yeah, get all the meat, all the fat, all that wonderful goodness. Mm -hmm. All right, we good. Everybody having fun? Ooh, there's three people in chat. Hi, third new person. Hope you're having fun and enjoying what we got going on. Uh, all right, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get a clean plate and uh, we'll finish up. So when grilling stuff like this, or just grilling in general, you don't, oh, we lost third person. Oh. Um, don't want to like mess around too much. Like I'm just gonna let this go until I'm ready to flip it. Uh, if I was cooking like a steak or a burger, then I'd look for the marks that to be timing. The, I want as much caramelization to happen right away. So we don't touch it. We let the cooking and the, the char and the, the awesome flavor development happen but before we do any movement of any of the meat and then we'll flip it once. The more times you flip it, you're gonna get weird, uneven cooking. Uh, 
and you're not like you just start steaming the meat from the inside like you're losing whatever heat development you've got from that early that preheating of the grill and since this is just a home gas grill and not like a professional kitchen where you have a bigger btu situation and like i you know i do at work like it takes longer for the the grill to regain the heat that we had just lost by putting this meat on there so it's going to kind of look around it's going to stick because it, it of all the stuff in the marinade it's not it's it's going to stick so just be really patient with it and just yeah look at that and that look good guys i think it looks super awesome it smells awesome um, hopefully my neighbors are super jealous of it. We'll see and move my mouse so that I don't lose the, the laptop. Got a little char here. That's not as char as I'd hoped. It's fine. But yeah, like I love the smell right now. Really excited for all the things that happened. Put that up there so we actually are cooking all of the stuff. I feel like we lost a lot of heat. I know I should cover it. It's a little breezy. It's not crazy hot today. Um, but it was a lot nicer than I thought it was going to be. The wind died down here in the evening, uh, which was just pretty, pretty gusty this morning. Um, when we were up picking up our plant starts up at Folks Farm, and it just like it was, it was a little blustery. Um, but it's gotten really nice today. Uh, and tomorrow's looking like summer's going to be here real soon. Uh, I'm pretty excited for uh, doing a lot of garden work. Got a, a big piece of fence to keep the stupid rabbits out of my garden because I don't want to grow produce for rabbits to eat. I want to grow produce for me to eat. Stupid rabbits. Um, anybody has good methods for uh, rabbit rabbit removal or deterrence, uh, hit me up off stream. Text me. Hit me on Facebook. Like I am always looking for any way to get rid of the little bastards. Um, moving stuff around, getting some good, I like where stuff is at. Look at that good color, guys. Um, this grill is gonna be a mess to clean later. Can't wait. Um, very, very excited. Can we see everything been looking good? Yeah, there we go, it's a little better, right? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. It smells really nice, like I get, I get all those wonderful flavors that we put in the marinade. Um, just like a nice, like that spice, a little bit of apple sweetness, um, the ginger, like all these things are coming up really nice. But, plus, somebody's got perfume on in the neighborhood because I can smell perfume as well. So that's the thing. Um, so, yeah, let this kind of go, right? Again, how's the steam? Seems good. Seems good. Yeah, nice. Uh, everybody's doing good, having fun. We're in, we're in on this. Nobody's texting me, so people are still like figuring it out. Ooh, it's a weird tree shadow. There's a the sun like right there, and there's a tree branch right there. It's an aspen. Aspens are devils. I hate them. Um, I, I liken them to weeds. I think they are the the tree weed uh, that we have to deal with here in Colorado. People are like, oh, they're so pretty. I'm like, yeah, but tell they like make more leaves in my yard than I'd ever, ever want to deal with. Like I had two full trips to Hagman's last year for, for leaf pickup. It was nuts. I'm just bitching. I know it's fine. Thanks for listening to me, bitch chat. appreciate it. Y'all is great. Oh, look at that. You can't see it. Can you? It's like weirdly lit and glary, but that's a good piece. I'm really excited. Look at a little flame. Ooh, got some flame kicking up from the pork fat. We're going to let some of these fatty pieces kind of render down a little bit. Yeah. Leftovers on this would be great in ramen. I think this would be a great way to utilize uh, like for like if you want to make a quick ramen or add to instant ramen. Um, I don't know if it's a hot spot right there. I'm going to kind of use that up. Um, the side seems this left side doesn't seem nearly as hot for me, which is yeah. I should close the lid, but then I know that I'm gonna get a grease fire like instantly, and then stream will not be nearly as fun. So it is what it is. Uh, 
Mark, uh, send me pictures of the of the garden. More pictures of your your new the, the hot bucket garden. Like I'm really excited uh, for what you guys are doing over there. I think it's super cool. Um, and then Jeff, are you ser were you serious about driving out here pretty soon? Like I'll be down to socially socially distant drink beers in this backyard area. I got a nice table we can sit fairly far away from one another. I got a side gate you can come in. I'll have beer, lots of fun beer. Um, yeah, let me know, man. That'd be dope. I'd love to hang out. Um, but you know, that's how it is always when you come out and visit. Hit that right there. Can you see the pieces are starting to look real good, right? We got some nice char. This is kind of how it would be in, um, in uh, when you go eat at Cream Barbecue and you cook yourself. Like, this is what the grill plate will look like. If you get a lot of meat, they'll come and replace the grill with the insert like halfway through so that you have a fresh set because no one wants to scrape the grill off like while you're eating. That sounds just super gross. Um, I've only had that happen once because I was there with a bigger group, like our family and my brother-in-law and his family. Like we're having, and they came and flipped out because we got like the all you can eat for like five or six people. And it was nuts. Like I, I didn't eat for like three days after that because – uh, well, if you ever been like that's just a lot of food. All you can eat at Korean barbecue is a ton of food. Um, it's and it's a great event. Like it's a, I don't know, I love it. It's like going to hibachi without hibachi. You're going like melting pot, but more fun. Like I never got the whole melting pot thing because I don't, I don't know, just cooking stuff in broth doesn't sound fun. I'll make some fun do at home, or just I'll call it cheese sauce and put it on nachos. I got a bit of a fire. It's cool. I'm, I'm not showing you this because it's just the same stuff over and over again. So I don't really worry more. Just trying to get everything kind of finished cooking. Mmm, smells good. Yo, I definitely have a pretty aggressive fire going over here from some of the grease and the other stuff. So that's fun. Um, grease fires. You don't want to let your meat sit in the grease fire because you're just cooking fat and it's going to have like a burned fat flavor. Um, so if you go to a restaurant and you see the guy like sauteing your stuff or like an open kitchen. You see this big flame up on like whatever he's, whatever that cook is cooking. Like, um, that's not good. Like you're just going to taste burned oil and it tastes like shit. Here's the train. There's the Mason train right there. So you all know, now know how far away I live from the train. It's good. Um, so those of you who are, Ooh, nice. I like it. Thanks Mark. Um, Wish chat wasn't so shitty right now. I hate the chat's not working. Like I, I kind of, I kind of feed off of the interaction. Ah, shit, I lost a piece. F, F in chat, everybody. I'll just type F in chat if you could, because that's a bummer. Um, yeah, burn oil, burn oil flavor. Like if, if I go and I say it's burn oil, like it's it's a, it's inexperienced cooks thinking that that flame is good. One thing you want to flame up on anything is you're adding liquor and you're burning it up, not because of anything else. Um, same thing on a grill. If you get a flame up on a grill, move it because you're just going to taste that burned fat and it tastes like ass. I hate it. All right. So we're done grilling meat. I'm bummed that I lost one piece, but shit happens, right? So we're going to take our tongs and our plate. We're going to go back inside. I like it. See, there's the, last, there's the back end of my backyard. And we're back inside. Ooh, it smells good. Laptop got crazy hot sitting there. Wife's going to be pissed. Um, I'm going to wipe off because we had some a little bit of floating grease spots. Cool to clean that up later. Anybody know it's a good way to clean uh, laptop uh, stuff? Let me know. I'm all about that. We're making that better. Um, sake, I think. Hmm. All right. So there's a bunch of uh, fun ways like to eat this. Like you can just make a big bowl. Ooh, ooh, look. We made an investment as a family. Uh, we like ramen and pho like all the time. Like you know, once a week we're doing either or both without fail. Uh, so we made an investment and got some super dope, uh, deep ramen bowls so what you could do is you could take this put some rice in the center of your bowl and then build like not like bibimbap but you know like a rice bowl with your punching garnish your meat and then whatever else you have a little sauce excuse me 
a little lime wedge wouldn't go bad here to garnish like a little bit of bright fresh acidity um some green onions chopped really finely would also be really good would be dope another way is you can get some like red leaf uh, lettuce washed and then you can make a uh, wrap so you just throw in some of your garnish uh, wrap it up and then you just eat the rice as like a condiment on the side uh that's generally how i'll eat it when i'm at korean barbecue uh, at home probably gonna go bowl style because uh, it's just a little bit easier um and then i get to eat whatever i want and how i want it which is kind of how i like the roll um so yeah like i let's look at the final the final product y'all we got we got asparagus, we got marinated cucumbers, we have grilled baby bok choy, we got our white ice cream radish, we have our um, radish seed, radish sprouts marinated with some sesame oil. Oh yeah, the funk. We got some kimchi, we got our pork. That look good, y'all hungry yet? Like that looks fucking phenomenal, y'all. And then we got some, I got some steamed sticky rice in the, in the rice cooker. And uh, yeah, I'll make a little bowl. I'll put a picture up on the, the old, the old interwebs, old Facebook and Instagram. Um, and that's gonna kind of be it for the stream, I think, guys. Um, again, thanks so much for coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me. It keeps me going uh, and doing these things. I love doing them. They're a lot of fun, but I like knowing that I'm making an impact. Um, or at least the people are thinking I'm funny. Or I don't know something, um, you know, little, little pride ego stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I think next week uh, we'll continue our tour of all things Asia that I enjoy. I don't know what that's gonna be yet. Um, if anybody has any suggestions or things they want to see me try to attempt and fail at or succeed at, uh, don't don't hesitate to hit me up in text, Facebook, Instagram, or email, whatever. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I like like just doing stuff people like to that people are kind of intrigued by or want to know more, more about. Uh, it gives me a chance to try some new at home. Um, but I think we'll maybe push into like maybe Cambodia or Viet or Thailand next week. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, or if I'm feeling incredibly random, we might go to Mexico and do something in Mexico. I'm kind of craving some some pozole or you know, something along those lines. Uh, maybe make some empanadas. I don't know. There's some stuff going in my head. I just kind of want to try some new stuff. Um, and then so we're not just always doing Asian food as well. Like maybe hit some other areas. Also kind of determine, like kind of see what happens in the market, what kind of vegetables and produce are out there. We're in a lot of leafy greens, um, chard, kale, spinach, arugula, like those kind of things. Bok choy will be out. And so, you know, trying to make a play with what we have there. We're getting close to root vegetables. Uh, pretty excited for beets and carrots. There's a couple of dishes I want to do and do play around on here with you guys on. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, have a great week. Be safe. Have fun. Um, enjoy the weather if you're in Colorado. I don't know what it's like in Portland, but I'm assuming it's nice or kind of nice, whatever. Um, and I guess I will be. Uh... Yes. Yes, agree. Puzzle, I've, been, I've been craving pozole so hard lately. Um, I've been doing, like, I make pork green chili at work, like, every other week because I do that and, like, half the breakfast things I serve at, at, at Drake. And, like, I am like I make it, like, kind of pozole style. Like, I don't use roux. I, like, I cook everything down. So, I like this, like, this hearty stew and not just, like, here's some roux-based green chili stuff. And I'm like, man, I got some harmony in there and mm, mm. Uh, maybe mix some homemade tortillas. We can talk about that. Um, so yeah. So let me know, hit me up and I'll, uh, I'll love to do it and have fun with it. So I guess uh, I'm going to end stream on that and don't forget like subscribe, share, whatever it is you want to do. And thanks so much for being here and spending an hour every Saturday night with me. Uh, I really, it means a lot to me. Um, and also one last play. I know you all saw it, but fucking Ethan got, soon the month uh i can't even like over the fucking moon man um having yesterday dr dog like rolled up to the front door in like full like thor gear he had like his later hosen on hat shirt and i just 
surprised the hell out of Ethan and Nicole. Like it was in the morning and they weren't like, they were still just like messing around and getting ready for their day. And it was, it was super cool. Like he had some really cool and like insightful things. And like, he's a great principal. I couldn't be more happy that he, that Ethan got into lecture. Um, like the passion that Dr. Dodd has for the students and the, and the education of our youth is, is super impressive. Um, and the fact that Ethan, like for reflection, yes, Carrie, you're right. Like Ethan is reflective. <laughs> uh, I lost it. I cried for a little while. Like it, it's, it was, I'm so proud of him. Um, I, I just, I wanted to kind of brag a little bit uh, on that. Cause you know, it's been a rough like quarter, if you will. And like having some bright spots are awesome. So thanks again. Uh, everybody have a great night and a great week. I'm going to post some pictures of my bowl and dinner because fucking bomb yo and uh i'll see you guys next week all right uh and thanks y'all have a good night